Welcome back to the channel internet people and we're going to be talking about Star Wars Outlaws once again. Honestly, it's because there's not a lot much to talk about and uh, it's always fun to watch a dumpster fire keep burning. Star Wars Outlaws creative director Julian Gareth explains why he describes k -Vest as a much more modern protagonist. As always, links in the description. He goes on to explain that k -Vest is a much more modern protagonist because she's subscribed to the channel and you should too. All right, seriously, let's read. Speaking with Game Informer, Gareth first shared his assertion, I think she's a much more modern protagonist than we usually see in games. He then explains she's somebody who is very much a street thief who gets thrown into things that are beyond her control and she kind of has to think her way out of it and that makes it a little bit more relatable than somebody who has all the confidence and sarcasm and just comes off as somebody who is not believable now nothing about her being a petty thief comes off as relatable to me because i mean i'm not a petty thief and you know who else was a petty thief but super relatable uh, and who had the sarcasm and who had the bravado Aladdin. Aladdin was a petty thief, had, was super sarcastic, had bravado, had confidence. However, it was just a mask, which I think is a, something a lot of people can relate to. Wearing a mask is uh, when you hold your emotions behind because you have to be a provider, you have to be a mother, you have to be a father in sales, and I have to go there and be a salesman. And if I'm not having a good time or uh, you know, like something tragic happened to me, I have to go there and I have to put a smile on my face. I have confidence. I have bravado, even though internally I'm not doing so well. You know, that's something that is relatable because we all wear masks from time to time. And some of us have to wear it all the time. So this whole she's a thief and that makes her relatable. It's not really what she's doing that makes a person relatable. It's more like the actions and the courage and the journey that they're going on. That's what makes someone relatable. But let's keep reading. He added, so having her be relatable in that way was something extremely important for us. Garethy previously told Edge magazine via Game Radar that his team intentionally tried to make the character more relatable by having her be a rookie. He explains that the team wanted her to be a little bit more relatable, she, uh, so they made her more of a rookie, a petty thief, who ends up in a situation that is much bigger than uh, ever expected. Now, again, having her be a rookie, does that automatically make her more relatable? Um, think, for example, Spider-Man 2, right? You're not, even Spider-Man 2018, you're not a rookie. But again, uh, Peter Parker, a very relatable character. Why? Because he's trying to balance his life. Yes, I know I'm not Spider-Man, but I have a hard time balancing my life sometimes between family, YouTube, and my job. I understand that my job and YouTube sometimes takes precedence over my family, which is not a good thing. It's not a great thing, right? I've canceled on people, on friends, because I wanted to make a video on time, because I wanted to get that video out. And that's something that I can relate with, with uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, because he's constantly putting Spider-Man above his personal life and his personal relations. Thankfully, this is something that I was able to improve on, but it's still something that I can relate with Peter. Game director Matthias Carlson also claimed Vess is relatable because she's not a Jedi. Carlson said, I think it is very relatable as a human being on planet Earth that this character doesn't have any magical powers or properties beyond her daring, her skills, her tools, and her buddy Nyx. Again, having someone not be a Jedi, a Wookiee, a Sith, a, a bounty hunter in the world of Star Wars is insane to me. I don't go to the Star Wars universe to be a regular person. I do that in my everyday life. Also, let's not forget God of War 2018. You're literally playing as a god. God of War 2018 was probably the game that I felt the most relatable to. Not because I'm playing as Kratos uh, or that I'm uh, killing Cyclops, or not Cyclops, but uh, trolls and whatever, but because of the relationship Kratos has with Atreus. The relationship, the father-son bond that they have is a reflection on the relationship I had with my father. Obviously, not to the same extent. My dad was not sending me out to go find deer, but it was a little bit cold when we grew up. And then eventually, we, we took some distance from each other because I got older, obviously, and you go through rebellious phases and you try to discover yourself. And now that I'm older, my relationship with my father has never been better. 
which is very similar to God of War 2018, where they have some distance between each other because Atreus is trying to grow as a person and discover himself. And then at the end of the game, they're much more close. You're literally playing as two gods bringing about the end of the world. And I felt like that story, that journey that Kratos and Atreus take together was extremely relatable. And again, it's not because they're gods. It's because of how they interact with each other, how they interact with the people around them. Kratos is a person who's deeply hurt, so he pushes everyone uh, 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 away from him, which is something that I did when I was younger and I was very hurt. I pushed my friends and family away. That's how you make a character relatable. It's not by making them a rookie or a petty thief. It's by putting them in situations and having them react the same way a normal person would. But hey, let's keep reading. The personality type is also perfectly suited for going on a swashbuckling adventure. I think that's something I really resonated thinking about this character in terms of building a game and gameplay around it, he added. Think of the core audience of Star Wars. Star Wars franchise has been out what, for 30 years. I don't know. Most of the people, most of your core audience are probably dudes that are closer to 40 than they are to their 20s. So these people, right, the men, the women, whatever, um, probably have careers, probably have families, uh, are not exactly looking to go on a swashbuckling adventure. So having a peppy, can-do attitude, I'm going to go on a swashbuckling adventure when most of your core audience is probably in their 40s, mid-30s, and I'd say late 20s at best, this is not relatable in the slightest. I mean, I'm in my 30s, and I'm not looking to go on a swashbuckling adventure right now. Uh, again, I mean, I'm a... I'm, I'm a I wouldn't mind going on an adventure here and there, but that's not exactly what I'm looking for. And that like, like the kind of character that I could relate to is a person who's trying to mind their own business and then gets put in a bunch of stuff, right? Kind of like Kratos. He was just trying to mind his business and then things came to him and it's like, oh great, now I got to deal with this, which I think is true for a lot of people in, um, uh, true for a lot of people in the core audience, I would say. The game's associate director, um, Marth Jonkers, also confirmed that the company and its employees spent a significant amount of time designing the character, especially her look. I don't know how much time you guys spent because this is a travesty. She looks like a gender race swap of Han Solo. So if you guys took that much time, it's kind of disappointing, to be honest. Jonker shared, we put a lot of care into her design and what she's wearing and how she looks to tell her story. She has a lot of elements in her design that tell a bit of her story. For example, she has a broken nose. She's been through a lot. You can see that she has scars and stuff. Honestly, the broken nose was not the move to make. I'm gonna be honest here and I'm not gonna apologize. People like to look at attractive people. It's plain and simple. I don't know why these publishers are having such a hard time understanding, especially your core audience, is probably dudes they want to look at a pretty lady call it misogynistic call it sexist call it whatever you want it doesn't change the fact that it's still true people like to look at attractive people which is why my youtube is about information and not my looks she also has a hairpin. I love that element because she used that to lock big doors and you can use that from the beginning to do some thieving, she added. Again, I don't have an issue with this, but if you're going to tell me that you spent hours on a character making them unique and you give them a hairpin to unlock stuff since the beginning of every single spy movie ever known to man and she looks like a, a watered down Han Solo, you need a new team of people because this is abysmal at the very best. The character design has been heavily criticized since its first reveal. Back at the beginning of March, ex-user Manga Lawyer shared two side-by-side -side photos of Kay Vess alongside actress Humberly Gonzalez who plays the character. I was going to go look on X real quick. This is who they had. This was the model that they decided to base K Vest on. As you can see, very pretty. A very generous bosom. And this is what they're going with instead. 
uh, you could probably use her as a cutting board if you really wanted to. And they made her look like a dude. Why? Why, in all things good, why would you take this and then turn it into this and then be surprised when people are not happy? Listen, developers, publishers, anyone who has more than a single digit IQ. People like looking at attractive people. Make your characters attractive, whether it's a man or a woman, if they're human. And people are gonna play the game. And they're not gonna complain. Obviously, you need more than just an attractive character to have a good game. But you, at least you have one less thing to worry about. That's where we're going to be ending things for today, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I am trying to hit 300 subs before the end of the month. And we're getting really close, guys. So I'm sure that we can do it. And if you don't want to help, well, remember, at the end of the day, I'm just some guy on the internet. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. If you want to see more of my face, be sure to click the video you see on screen right now.